Good day. I will be discussing all about the different indigenous tribes of Luzon. According to some estimates, there are close to 100 indigenous tribes exclusive of the Muslim groups in the Philippines. The National Commission on Indigenous Peoples estimates that there are approximately 11.3 million indigenous peoples in the Philippines. There is a great variety of social organization and cultural expression among these communities. Some specialize in wood carving, basket making, and weaving. Others are known for their embroidery, applique, and bead making. Let us get to know the different indigenous tribes found in the highlands and lowlands of Luzon. Let us start with the tribes found in the Cordilleran Mountains. Igorot is the mainstream collective name of several tribes in the Cordilleras or the Cordilleras Administrative Region or CAR. The provinces that make up CAR are Abra, Apayao, Binguet, Kalinga, Ifugao, and Mountain Province. Baguio City is also included as part of CAR. Igorot is the modern term to describe the indigenous people of the Cordillera Mountains. When first discovered by the Spaniards in the 16th century, they were called Igolotes, later to be respelled Igorotes. The Spaniards used other names to describe Igorots based on where in the Cordilleras they were found. They are categorized into six different ethno-linguistic groups. Bontok, Ibaloy, Ifugao, Isneg or Apayao, Kankanae, and Kalinga. The Bontok thrive on the bank of the Chico River. Famous as headhunters in the past, they have since turned their backs from the practice of headhunting. At present, a huge majority of the Bontok have embraced Christianity. They have seamlessly transitioned into a peaceful agricultural people. The Ibaloy II are an agrarian society. Mostly found in southern Binguet, there are about 93,000 of them all over the Philippines. Their language, which is also called Ibaloy, is from the Austronesian family of languages. Ifugao on the other hand, are known for their epics and their stories, such as the Hudhud and the Alim. Like the Buntok, Ifugao people were headhunters in the past. Ifugao people have a total of four different dialects and are sometimes called Amganad, Kiangan, or Mayoyao. The word Ifugao means from the hill. Isneg or Apayao can be found living near the banks of the Ap Apayao River. Originally, slash and burn farmers, they have since begun to practice more sustainable forms of farming. The Isneg are also known as good fishers and have a penchant for coffee. The Kankanae are one of the few tribes who still practice a way of living more common in the old days although is fast disappearing as well. In the Kankanae, young men and women are divided by gender and then ushered into separate dormitories. Entry into a dormitory signifies a young person's readiness to enter the stages of courtship. Courtships are carried out in the Abgan or the girl's house. And finally, the Kalinga. The Kalinga tribes are perhaps the most diplomatic of all the Igorot as they put great importance on kinship and social ties and are heralded for the peace pacts that have allowed their tribes to become strong. They are also known as the most heavily adorned of all the Igorot people. Generally, we can infer that Igorots are a highland race and are well adapted to life in raised altitudes. To assure themselves a steady supply of crop, 
They have even devised a way to carve terraces at the sides of mountain, which they plant with various cranes. We now call those the rice terraces of the Cordilleran Mountains. Let us try to know the other characteristics of igorots, especially with how they dress. Generally, the term used to refer to igorot costume for males is bahag. It is a long woven fabric that can be 10 to 15 inches in width and with a length of 3 to 5 feet. The primary purpose of the bahag is to cover the male's private parts. After covering the male organs, it is then wrapped around the waist to prevent it from falling off. Traditionally, the igorot males don't have any upper attires. For some tribes in the Kalinga and Buntok, tattoos are evident. The more tattoo a male igorot has, the greater his authority in the village is. In the olden days, an igorot having many tattoos signify that he killed more tribal adversaries using his spear or bolo. In contrast, the igorot costume for females features a large rectangular woven clothing that measures 3 to 4 feet long and 3 to 5 feet wide. Generally, it is called tapis. It is simply wrapped around the waist and often a thread is used to secure it from falling off. In the past, Igorot women wear no upper garments. And surprisingly, there were no incidents of malice or sexual abuse. In fact, the Igorot males highly regarded women with respect. It's only now that women have to wear upper clothing as a result of modern pressures. Igorot women, particularly those in Kalinga, also wear colorful beads, some of which date back to the Spanish times. Many beads or traditional necklaces manifest the early trade between the Chinese and the Igorots long before the Spaniards conquered the Philippines. Now, what do the Igorots eat? Pinic pican is a dish from the Cordilleras that's prepared by beating a live chicken before burning, slaughtering, and cooking it. Its name comes from the word pick pick, or to beat repeatedly. Pinic pican began as a means of food hunting by tribes of the mountain province. It was also done as a ritual for decision making, with the innards of the chicken dictating good or bad. Following their beliefs that the life of the chicken must go back to where it belongs, Igorots followed certain practices in preparing the bird, such as invoking the spirits and slaughtering the chicken in very specific ways. The interpretation of Pinikpikan differs throughout the Cordilleras. It depends on who you speak to, and furthermore, on what tribe they are from, and what they have been accustomed to as taught by their elders. Nevertheless, the history is more or less standard. Now let us watch how the Pinikpikan is being prepared. The word pinikpikan came from the word pikpik, which means to, to beat repeatedly, uh, mainly with a stick. And uh, some people might think uh, it's, it's quite unacceptable, but this has been deeply uh, been ingrained in our youth, in our traditions, and, and in our culture. Uh, my name is Rainer, uh, born and raised here in Baguio City. Proud Igorot. My father is actually from uh, Iloilo, but my mother is uh, purely Igorot. Uh, her roots are from Bontok, Mountain Province. The history of the dish, Pinikpikan, uh, has been lost uh, through generations, and uh, the interpretation of uh, this dish has been, it varies depending on the elder that you're speaking to, and uh, it's been passed down from generation to generation. How did Pinikpikan start? Long after the people who migrated through the land bridge from Asia to the Philippines, 
and uh, started trekking uplands in the North Philippines. That is where the Pinikpikan came in. The Pinikpikan started as a matter of force majeure, meaning to say when they were already in the highlands, they hunted for food. They never hunted for sports. Just like the American Indians, they also have their belief. They believe that the life of the, the chicken must go back to where it belongs. They have their own belief. So the first step to, in uh, preparing pinikpikan is of course first uh, beating the chicken. Uh, the main purpose of beating, why we beat the chicken is to help the blood uh, stick to the bone or to help the blood coagulate or to clot. It, uh, it adds to the taste. We beat uh, specifically underneath the wings and on the neck. And after that, so after you finish beating the chicken, we move to the next step which is uh, defeathering. We remove uh, not all of the feathers, but uh, the long ones which are located on the wings. So on the next step, the third step, what we have to do is uh, burning the feathers. We burn the chicken along with its feathers. This procedure adds to the smoky smokiness, uh, or the smoky flavor uh, of the chicken. After that, after you finish burning everything off, we just clean it up, clean everything, and proceed to to the butchering. Changing of the feathers. After uh, singeing of the feathers. Okay, they carefully divide the chicken and look very carefully into the heart of the chicken. When the chicken that they have uh, hunted down is bad for the day or is good for the day, according to how the bile and the heart of the chicken is prepositioned. Now these are the eggs, these are the eggs. Intestine, liver. Yeah, uh, nothing is wasted. We used up everything. And yung ginagamit nila sa chicken nuggets. Yeah, that's the part. When a family member of the tribe gets sick, when the bile and the heart is not in a way good to what they're seeing, they have to ask the parents to have another chicken butchered for the other day. Meaning to say, what they believe is that God is not favoring the family. Until such time that the bile or the heart is prepositioned in a way that they call it uh, good, then they will say, the sick person will get well in uh, a matter of days. So it is just thanking their own demigod why they have to do the pinikpikan. They do not do pinikpikan every day. It is a solemn occasion. So, open. So, this is the finished uh, product. <laughs> this is how we prepare pinikpikan in our place. Each household has their own way of pre preparing the dish. You may add vegetables if you want. Uh, add other spices if you want. So this is how it looks like. We just put a tag and that's all. While we're cooking the pinikpikan, sometimes we also have this uh, meat, which is called a tag. We add it. Okay, so that is how they prepared the pinikpikan and how the pinikpikan is related to their belief in the cordilleras. So this time, we are going to move to another set of tribes found in the Carabalio mountain range near the Sierra Madre, who are collectively known as the Carabalio tribes. The Carabalio tribes are divided into five ethno-linguistic groups, the Ibanag, Ilongot, Gadang, Ikalahan, and Isinay, who together with the Agta people inhabit the Carabalio mountain range in eastern central Luzon. 
Nueva Vizcaya, Quirino, and Nueva Ecija. They are less known than the Igorots because there are lesser legit researches about them. For this tribe, we are going to learn more about the Ilongots and the Gadang people. The Ilongot or the Bugkalot, also known as Ilongot or Ibilaw, are a tribe inhabiting the southern Sierra Madre and Carabalio Mountains on the east side of Luzon in the Philippines. Primarily in the provinces of Nueva Vizcaya and Nueva Ecija and along the mountain border between the provinces of Quirino and Aurora. They are also commonly referred to as Ilungot, especially in older studies, but nowadays the endonym Bogkalot is preferred in modern ethnic research. They were formerly headhunters as well. In Ivan Salva's study in 1980 of the Bogkalots, she described gender differences related to the positive cultural value based on adventure, travel, and knowledge of the external world. Bukalut men, more often than women, visited distant places. They acquired knowledge of the outside world, amassed experiences there, and returned to share their knowledge, adventures, and feelings in a public oratory in order to pass on their knowledge to others. The Bukalut men received acclaim as a result of their experiences. Because they lacked external experience on which to base knowledge and expression, Bukalut women had inferior prestige. But even though a male has a high level of prestige, he may not own much economic or political power compared to others that are less prestigious within the society. Ilongots or Bukalots are also very artistic, like the Igorots. These are just some of their crafts which are made of different natural materials. They were able to make bracelets, necklaces, earrings, ear pendant, hair ornaments, and necklace pendants. The Gadang are a linguistically identified ethnic group resident for centuries in the watershed of the Cagayan River in northern Luzon, Philippines. Gadang speakers were recently reported to number as many as 30,000. This may include another 6,000 related Gadang speakers and other isolated linguistic groups whose vocabulary is more than 75% identical. Americans assume that lowland Gadang originated with the highlands groups who subsequently became Christianized, and then settled in established valley communities, acquiring the culture and customs of the Spanish, Chinese, and other lowland peoples. Many of them also distinguish the Gadang residents of Afogao and Apayao from other mountain tribes primarily by dress customs without considering language issues. Interviews in the mid-20th century identified a pair of Gadang hereditary social classes, the Kameranan and Aripan. Gadang correspondents informed researchers that Aripan is similar in meaning to the Tagalog word Alipin. Lowlands Gadang women regularly own and inherit property. They run businesses, pursue educational attainment, and often serve in public elected leadership roles. So these are just some of the tribes you can find in the Carabalio mountain range. We also have the Negritos. The term Negrito is a Spanish word, a diminutive of the word Negro. Negritos refers to a collective group of indigenous tribes in the Philippines described as short, dark-skinned, and kinky-haired people. Although the Negritos of the Philippines possess some physical similarity with the pygmies of Africa, they are completely unrelated in terms of genetics. They are scattered all over the country such as Zambales, Bataan, Pampanga, Palawan, Panay, and etc. They live in the coastal and mountainous areas of the Philippines. These include subgroups called the Agta, Aita, Ati, Aita, Dumagat, 
and 25 more tribes from the Philippines. They are nomadic people. They travel from place to place to search for food. They are known to live in the houses made of branch grass when they are not traveling, as what you can see in the picture. And they use spears to catch the, their fish and bows and arrows to hunt for wild animals. Now let us try to know or to dig deeper one of the Negritos, which are the Aitas or the Agtas. The Aitas or the Agtas have dark skin, curly hair, and short stature. They are skilled hunters, and they are nomadic people because of their supply of food. They are mostly found in Zambales, Bataan, and Pampanga, and many of them were dispatched to different parts of the country due to the eruption of Mount Pinatubo. In the island of Palawan, there are also indigenous groups which are not that exposed to modern people. These are the non-Muslim tribal people of Palawan Island, located further west of Mindoro. This group is composed of four ethnic groups, the Tagbanwa, the Batak, Koyunun, and Kenoy. These groups of people live in remote villages throughout the province that are found in mountain areas. In the year 1962, a team of anthropologists from the Philippine National Museum unearthed various fossils at the Lipuon Point, which is now commonly known as the Tabon Cave in the municipality of Quezon in Palawan. The team, which was led by Dr. Robert Fox, was able to discover the remains of Homo sapiens that are believed to be 22,000 to 24,000 years old during that time. Those remains were then named Tabon Man and were then used for further study. The discovery of the Tabon Man and the fossils found in the cave gave way for Palawan to earn the title the Cradle of Philippine Civilization. As mentioned earlier, the Tagbanwas are believed to be descendants of the Tabon Man due to the many similarities that they have when it comes to language, alphabet, practice of kaingin, and the common belief in soul relatives. This tribe is found mostly in the central and northern portion of Palawan. They practice shifting cultivation of upland rice, which is considered as a divine gift. They are also known for their rice wine ritual called Pagdiwata. The cult of the dead is the key to the religious system of the Tagbanwa, who also believe in countless deities found in the natural environment. Tagbanwa are known brown-skinned people with slim and erect stature and has straight hair. This ethnic group is divided into two groups, the Central Tagbanwa and Kalamian Tagbanwa. The two groups speak different languages and do not exactly have similar customs. The Batak tribe is a group of indigenous people who live in the rugged interiors of the northeast portion of the province of Palawan. This group of people lives close to nature and are extremely peaceful and shy. They believe in nature spirits with whom they communicate through the aid of a babaylan or a shaman. The Pataks are also called Tinitianes and are considered by anthropologists to be closely related to the Aitas of Central Luzon, another Negrito tribe. They are described as people who tend to be small in stature and has a dark complexion and they also have short, curly, mostly kinky hair. These are traits that earn the Negrito groups of their name. For centuries, the Bataks have combined a hunting-gathering kind of lifestyle with seeding of useful food plants, kaingin, a slash-and-burn farming method, and trading. Bataks are animists. They believe that spirits reside within nature. The Bataks make a regular offering to these spirits, while shamans undergo spiritual possessions in order to communicate with the spirits and to heal the sick. These days, 
Pure Bataks or those whose parents both belong to the Batak tribe have become highly rare due to the incursion by immigrants and the expulsion of the tribe to the society. Most Bataks would prefer marrying a person outside of the tribe and will later on have children who will choose not to be not to go by the norms of the tribe. As an effect, Bataks are being absorbed into a more diffuse group of upland indig- indigenous people who are slowly losing their tribal identities, their unique spirituality and culture. There are even debates as to whether these people still exist as a distinct ethnic entity or not. Lastly, the Koyunun people. This group of indigents is considered as an elite class among the hierarchy of the natives who live in Palawan. During the Spanish colonization in the Philippines, Cuyo was one of the territories of Palawan that had the strongest Spanish presence. The Koyunan of today is usually a Roman Catholic, Christian Protestants, and animists with strong Spanish adaptations. Koyunans are divided into four subgroups which distinguish one Koyunun from the other. First is the Paraguanin, or the Koyuno people who settled mostly in the mainland Palawan, Paragua. Poroanin, the Koyuno people who settled mostly in the islands and islets of Palawan. Mestizo, the Koyuno who usually are half Chinese or Spanish. And Lacto, the Koyuno who did not accept Catholicism and lived as animists. Last one is the Taot Bato or the Kenoy. The Taot Batus, also Kenoy, name means people of the rock. They are not actually a separate language or ethnic group, but rather a small community of traditional Palawanons who happen to reside in the crater of an extinct volcano during certain seasons of the year, in houses built on raised floors inside caves, though others have set their homes on the open slopes. The men of the tribe wear G-strings, while the women cover their lower bodies with bark or clothes that is made into a skirt. The upper half is left exposed, although some now wear blouses that are bought from the market. The people practice agriculture, with cassava as the major source of carbohydrates. They also plant sweet potatoes, sugarcane, malunggay, garlic pepper, string beans, squash, tomatoes, and pineapples. Others practice fishing, hunting, and industrial arts. So those are just some of the main indigenous tribes found in Luzon. There are still a lot of tribes that needs further research and exposure to the public. Some of them face a range of threats from what they frequently describe as development aggression. As they struggle to defend their land, much of it is in areas of forest or mountain that are rich in natural resources and so conflicts often arise with companies, many of them based outside of the Philippines, who want to exploit those resources, mostly without the consent of the indigenous people. All of these activities can lead to conflict, which leads to militarization of their land and in loss of livelihood or encroachment of settlements, which can lead urbanization.